so I didn't necessarily want to do an Aunt Fisher episode on the Dusky Cobb so soon. It's a fish that brings me a lot of joy, but at the same time I'm quite concerned about. So in terms of joy, I think it's a fish we're going to see quite a lot on these episodes as I try to catch that 100 pounder, at least try my best, and chase those PBs. But in terms of concern, I'm quite concerned mostly about the generational difference that we're seeing in the dusky cob stock, and secondly, just how hard it is for them to survive. I'm not talking about some expert opinion. Um, it doesn't take like an ichthyologist or any specialist to pick up an old stave Elena, to listen to some old stories, and it quickly becomes evident that there aren't as many cob around as there used to be. Like for instance, our dad who passed away in 2016 played a major role in the way Mike and I fish, but he was by no means an expert angler. But a lot of our childhood memories involve him catching his then bag limit of 10 cob and going home. I mean, he barely had time to put it, help us and put a bait in the water for us, but he got his 10 cob like almost shot for shot. And you know, that's how we were raised. Whereas now we're fishing for less fish, but it's still pretty much the same fish, right? Because the 10 kilo cob zen are the 30, 40 kilos that we're trying ourselves silly to catch now. So less fish, same fish. It's this dilemma that there just aren't many of them around for this generation as there was the generation before that. Cubs live by three rules. So they survive firstly by being abundant. And as we just said, there really aren't that many around anymore in comparison to what they naturally should be. So yes, we're still catching cob, but not nearly the numbers that we should have. The second rule is to use estuaries as shelters. So unfortunately with pollution, drought, water getting taken out of catchments, and people also now targeting you in estuaries, which they didn't used to back in the day. The estuaries aren't really a safe place to grow up anymore. The last rule if you're a cob and you want to survive as a species is to outlive. So a lot of people ask why do these fish even get old? So what's the point of getting old? Why not just spawn young, grow fast, get it over and done with? But with a dusky cob, the aim is live to 30, 40, 50 years old. Outlive the droughts. I mean drought periods can take decades. But outlive them so that you're, within your lifetime you can see one, two, three successful spawning events where you know you will have a good recruitment of your juveniles. Will you even get to see that age or will you die at pan size? I mean pan size isn't even breeding age yet. So I mean how does a cub even make it to 30, 40, 50 to see those successful recruitments? So once you add it all up, it's really no surprise that we're sitting at 1-5% to with no real glimmers of hope at the end. But we are going to be chatting at the end of this episode of cool things to come and some really um, exciting developments in the dusky cob reg regulations. So yeah, maybe not all gloom and doom. We're here and the gate opens at 7 and there's no queue, so I don't know what PE knows that I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully we're onto something. Maybe it's just the start of our luck for the day. We'll see. How exciting. Anyway, my little polo, Fran's away, so it's just my brother and I. And we have packed this polo up. I mean, it is full to the brim. It's actually quite impressive. Look at that. There's a trolley, there's like 10 rods in there, there's a dog somewhere, I don't know where she is. <laughs> oh wow! Prove that you don't need a bucky to be a fisherman. <laughs> I'm 
So, wet mat covering the eyes, 895. Put in with carbs when you're tagging carbs is where you tag them. You always want to be in this ridge, but in the meat, so like one or two centimeters down, not against the fin, and 45 degrees to the body. Avocado. spinning a bit further down the beach and in the process we've got a nice little skinny while scratching around and now she's just gonna put a little tag in it what the blood for him and thank goodness it's a 4-0 while she would have swallowed nice bird 46 That's true, eh? Yeah. 
Buddy, you can do it. You know, people often come up to me and they're like, hypothetically speaking, Verve, if I were to keep a cob, what would, what do you, what size cars do you think I should keep that would minimize my impact? 
And I always say, listen, buddy, stick to the rules. You know, like the law is the law. So size limit, number one. Number two, I mean, I'm not really sure if I can give you an answer that I feel 100% comfortable with because, you know, you have these massive fish that contribute massively to the population because they're producing millions and millions of eggs, you know, when they're these big females especially. But then you have these smaller fish, you know, 80 centimeters to one meter. And you know, there's a 50% chance that that fish hasn't even bred yet. Like it's existed for eight to 10 years and it hasn't even had a chance to contribute to the survival of the species. So do we keep that one or do we keep the massive breeding stock? I mean, to me, both don't sound very good. I mean, if we think of the dusky carp population as a triangle, it's got this broad base, with lots of juveniles and then in the middle you have all the breeding adults and in the apex you have these massive hundred pounder fish that are keeping the population going it's the we're always just chasing the top of that triangle and we think that you know natural mortality survivorship that takes out a fair portion of the bottom of the triangle anyway so why don't we just take those fish but natural mortality will still be there for the fish that are left behind so all we're doing then is making the triangle smaller, right? Like it might not collapse, but we're still making the triangle of the population a lot smaller. So that's why I really wanted to emphasize with this episode is protect the breeding fish, but also protect the youngsters. I mean, they still have a major role to play 10, 20, 30 years down the line for keeping the species alive. But talking about things down the line, It does seem that we are going to get new dusky carb regulations either this year or next. It just needs to go through a social impact assessment to see how the new regulations will affect people's livelihoods. But should it survive that process, we will in South Africa be getting the first slot limit for a recreational species, which has been suggested decades ago, but it's finally happening now. Woohoo! So yeah, it seems that the slot limit before cobs will now be between 50 centimeters and 110 centimeters, meaning you will have to release any fish under 50 and any fish over 110. So whether it's going to have a major impact, whether it's going to be properly enforced, whether it's too little too late, um, we'll only know much later down, but if it does come into play, I'm excited. It's one thing that I think might just, might just keep dusky cobs around for my kids and grandkids and they don't have to watch these YouTube videos and and feel jealous, you know, just how we were jealous of the generations before us.